Hey there, this is Chris Sev. I was browsing LaravelNews.com today and one of my favorite Laravel sites, and I'm a big fan of Laravel. I saw this announcing Laracon online and I was scrolling down and over here, I saw this Laravel jobs thing. And normally I don't really look at the sidebar of sites, but the scrolling animation here kind of caught my eye. So I immediately went and did this with my eyeballs and scrolled in like this and said, wow, that's really cool. Let's see if we can build it in Tailwind. So I have a brand new code pen here. Go into CSS settings, open up Tailwind, and we'll add the Tailwind CSS style sheet there. And I'll click save and close. So what we're gonna do is we are going to try to recreate this thing right here. And we are going to do the animated thing here, which will require some custom CSS which usually we don't do custom CSS for Tailwind tutorials like this, but a lot of cases you will need some custom stuff. So what I'm gonna do is go into my code pen and let's start out by doing min height screen and flex on that. And then on top of that item center and justify center so we can center our demo. And then we're gonna say card goes here. And what I want to do here is get all of the HTML out of the way so that we can worry about our CSS and our Tailwind classes next. So I'm going to have Laravel jobs here, which will make an H2. We'll have a paragraph here. We'll have a link here. Oh, that's a cool effect. We're not going to do that in this video, but I should save that for another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. So we have H2 P tag and I'll copy this P tag and then view all jobs. And then we'll worry about this stuff at the bottom. So here, I'm gonna go for background gray. It seemed like a pretty dark gray, maybe 800. Let's go for padding of 10. Let's go for rounded. And then inside of that, and I'm using Emmet here. I have a video course on Emmet that's totally free. I'll put a link to that if you wanna see that Emmet course. Rounded, let's go for an H2 in there. And inside of that, it's gonna say Laravel jobs. And then on top of that, there's gonna be a P and I'll paste in that right there. And then next to that, I'm gonna put an A tag and then the text there was view all jobs. I never know if we should capitalize buttons like that. But let's do that. Okay, so Emmett, thanks to that, is going to handle all of that for us. Let's go here, we're gonna say text is white and that would cascade down to all of them. Now let's worry about the H2. Class is gonna be, I think it was kind of an orange, kind of a red, so let's go for background red at, sorry, text red at maybe 700. That doesn't really match, 500 maybe? That seems better. Okay, so that's text red 500, let's go for text 5XL, font is extra bold, and we could add a margin to the bottom of this, or we could go to the top of this and do space Y is maybe eight. That might be a little much. Space Y6 should do the job just fine. Okay, so we have our H2 done. Let me space that out so it gets a little bit easier to read. Let's focus on our P tag next. I'm gonna go for class. Let's go for a larger font size. Text is maybe 2XL. And now it kind of stretched our overall container and I don't really want that. So let's go to this container and just for this demo, let's go with is like four fifths. Get it to be about 80% of our overall viewport. Okay, so that looks good there. Let me double check what's going on here. The official Laravel job board. The font seems a little different, but that's okay. Seems like the line height is also a little bit bigger. Let me see if I can increase that. Let's go for uh, leading at maybe loose. That seems a little too much. Maybe leading is totally fine as default. All right, that's fine, but I think maybe a little bit more padding would be better. It seemed like there was a lot of padding on the demo. Okay. And the reason that this A tag isn't getting the margin from the space Y classes, you can do class is block so that it can get the block level element will get the padding and since we don't want it full width, let's go inline block. Let's go for background is the red at 500, padding Y of maybe four, padding X of six, rounded text 
is red at 50. Okay. So we're able to create this button. We're able to create the text right here. And that, let's go double check. And it seems pretty decent. It looks like the font size is a little higher on the button. It might even match this paragraph. So let's do that. Text 5XL here, text 2XL here. Let's do the same right around here, text 2XL. Okay, uh, I don't really agree with that giant font size, but uh, text XL should do the job. So that's how we're gonna create this card with a header, paragraph, and a button. But what we're really looking for in this tutorial is this ending part right here. This really, really cool section where we can have some scrolling job listing because that's really what caught our eye to this card, right? We're gonna go here and that's all of the content. We're gonna put this inside of the card still, but I'm gonna say uh, list scrolling, list goes here, add a comment and let's do a div right here. And I wanna show you the overall technique before we fully style this out. Scrolling list here. And I'm gonna do an A tag around that and an A tag here. Okay, so if we had a bunch of these like this, and I'm actually gonna wrap these all in a div because we had three rows. So when we have three rows, I'm going to do like one row is a div of A tags, one row is a div of A tags, and so on and so forth. But you notice how they start stacking on each other, right? We are going to go class right here is absolute. Let's go for left is zero and right is zero. And we are going to make sure that this absolutely positioned item is inside of this card. So we're gonna say, hey card, you are relative. Okay, so that's gonna handle it there. And then another thing we can do here is set a width on this. Well, let's go for tailwind width right here. And I'll search the documentation for width. And I wanna go more than what this overall thing is. So width is full 100%, width of screen is 100 VW. That seems like a little excessive, but actually maybe we don't need to set the width. Let's see class is flex, and these should all sit side by side. So those are starting to stack. I don't want them to stack. So the problem here is that it is constrained to the width of the card, and that is a problem. So to get them to sit side by side, we're gonna use white space, no wrap. And that basically says don't wrap on each line. You're just gonna go all the way across. And let's see what this looks like text red at 300 maybe, 400. So there we go. It goes all the way over to the side there. And then the way that we can get these to be constrained inside of this div is we are going to say overflow hidden on the parent card. So we go overflow hidden. And now that should hide. So anything that goes outside of the bounds of the parent card will be hidden. And that's kind of the strategy I take a lot of the time is you'll see me doing these big absolutely positioned divs and then hiding the sides of them so that the overflow is hidden. Okay, so next up, we are going to make sure that these are all styled pretty decently. So I'm gonna highlight all of these right here. And let's go for class is going to be background is, well, our background here was gray 800. So we wanna be offset from that gray, maybe 600. Let's go for padding Y two, padding X of three. Text is, well, let's try to put text extra small on the parent, text extra small. And because it's on the parent, it should cascade down to all of the children right there. Text red, we're gonna change that to text gray and maybe even lighter, 200. And we're gonna drop the padding Y because it is a little too high, it looks like, padding Y1. And then to get some spacing on the sides of it, we're gonna do space, X is one. Okay, so that's looking better already. And if you wanted, you could even round out the corners of all of these, rounded, so that they are rounded. And I don't think that's the correct gray. Let's go gray at 300 because that is a little bit too much of a pop on there. Okay, so I want a little bit more padding on the bottom of this. So this 
card right here. I'm going to do padding 16. So let's do padding 16, but also padding bottom of maybe 24. Get it a little bit more so that there's more room for these little, little scrolling dots links to live. Maybe even more, 32. Okay, so that goes there, but this is left, right. We need to do bottom is zero there. But we don't want it on the very bottom, so let's go bottom 10. So it comes 10 off of the bottom. Oh, way too much. Let's go bottom two. Cool. So that looks better, maybe bottom four. Sorry, I know I play around with these numbers a little bit too much. Okay, so scrolling list here, scrolling list here, scrolling list here. And now the fun part is where we add in our custom animation so that this kind of scrolls over and over. So we're going to add a link to this and call it scroller, or sorry, a class to this. And then let's go create a custom CSS animation. And the reason we're making a custom one is because Tailwind's animation classes that are built in don't have something that can do this. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say keyframes. And then I'm going to say scroll is what we're going to call this. We're going to say from, and we're going to say transform, translate x at zero. And then we're going to say to transform, translate x 100%. And essentially what that does is it scrolls from one side to the other. And then we'll talk about how we can make that do a little bit more. So I'm going to do this scroller and I'm going to say animation animation is scroll and we have to give it a seconds so let's say five seconds scroll and let's do infinite so it always runs there we go so five seconds is a little too fast once we're done with this at the final end of the demo we'll probably do like 15 seconds slower of a scroll and even that's maybe too much but i want to do this translate x is negative 100 percent so that it's going from the right over to the left. Okay, so that's cool right there. The next step to this is you'll see that once it stops at 100%, it's going to just jump back and then restart. And it's kind of hard to see since all the words are the same, but it does just go like this and then it jumps back. So what we can do here is say alternate so that it goes one side to the other side to the other side and now it kind of looks like a fluid animation. And if you look at the Laravel News one, it actually does do a jump back to the beginning. So maybe they need to add that little alternate uh, animation direction class. So let's go back here. Okay, so that is our scrolling list there. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna copy this whole thing right here and paste this in twice. So one, two, we're going to need to add some more classes probably, like a space Y on this one. Space Y is one. There we go. So now we get some spacing in there. And then the last part to this is that everything is scrolling at the same speed. So it looks a little bit weird. What we can do here is we can say scroller, first child, or sorry, for scroller, div first child animation delay is maybe two seconds and then we can do the same thing for the second child and child two and give this a three second delay so now what's happening here is that all of them should which it doesn't look like they are but each one should be moving at a different speed so let's see what's going on here Okay, so let's see. This one right here has no animation delay. That makes sense. Let's go here. This one here has no animation delay. So maybe my, oh yeah, my, my class was wrong. So we're on the scroller div, not scroller child div. So I have to go over here and say right here, get rid of this div, get rid of that div. So the first child has a delay the second child has a delay, and then the third child has a delay. So they all kind of move at different uh, times right there. But you can also make this even further and say animation duration. This one is 20 seconds. And then this one, animation duration, 
is maybe 25 seconds. So this will override the 15 seconds. So you'll see that one scroll, that one scroll, that one scroll, and they're all scrolling at different speeds. So it kind of gets this really fun effect. All right, so that will wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little bit of custom CSS on top of the Tailwind classes, which is not what we usually do, but that's totally okay. I think our overall result ended up really well, and I think this is a really cool thing to have to kind of make a person's eye look to a certain point of a website. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.